Daniel here for Tabletop for One and my top 10 hidden gen solo board games. And I thank you for joining me tonight for my top 10 hidden gem games. Now, hidden gems is kind of a, a subjective list. And I kind of base it on whether or not I see it in the social media feeds that I frequent. So some of these games you're going to see in your social media feeds more regularly than me. And maybe they aren't so hidden after all. But these are games that I just don't see mentioned often enough. And I won't mention games that I've mentioned in previous top 10 lists like Consumption or Whistle Mountain or Wishland. I won't mention those. Now this top 10 list was inspired by the BG41 Board Games for One solo board game group on Facebook. If you haven't checked them out, check them out. I'll put the link in the description below. And so for number 10, it might get mentioned more often than the others, but it's a diamond in the rough and you gotta break through that rough surface to find that gem. And that is One Deck Galaxy. Now, One Deck Galaxy is currently being fulfilled, or actually probably at the end of its fulfillment by now. And it's hitting the stores, and a lot of people are starting to play it, and they're finding, oh, the rule book's not so good. It's unfortunate, but the rule book just is not clear. It's not intuitive. It's hard to process. It took me forever, myself, to be able to even do a playthrough video. In my first playthrough video, I got a rules error wrong. I notated that in the video. My second one was a little bit better, but it was a rough go, but the game is so good. It's not one deck dungeon. It's a different kind of game. It uses similar mechanics, but it adds to it. It's, there's more depth to this game. There's more complexity to this game, but it's so much better than the first one, in my opinion. And if you can make it through the rule book, you'll find a very, very beautiful gem underneath, and I hope you do. And so for number nine, this one came out of nowhere for me personally. I hadn't heard anything about it. I saw it on sale for like 20 bucks, and I thought, oh, that's cool, a train game, Euro game. It's got solo mode, everything looks great for it, but I haven't heard anything about it. I went ahead and bought it, it was excellent. And that is Shinkansen Zero Kai, or K. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But Shinkansen is really an interesting network building game and train type game where you're building this network across, I believe it's a Japanese city, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's got some really good action selection mechanics. It's got an AI that's easy to use, very streamlined, very easy to implement. And the game is really easy to learn, but there's so much to it. It's, it's so much fun. There's there's a lot of good decisions to make, and there's always so much you want to do, but you can only accomplish so much. And that AI pushes and blocks you in various ways and tries to get to the goals faster than you, and you've got to try to beat it out for some of those goals. It's fantastic. Now, the, the components are a little bit on the small side, hard for me to pick up with my fingers, but... I mean, the gameplay is so much fun, and it's quick. It's like 30, 45 minutes for a pretty, you know, decent medium Euro game, and I love it. So definitely check it out. I still see it on sale all the time for $20. Definitely worth looking into. And for number eight, we have another Euro game. Now, I personally dubbed this one kind of like a lesser Brass Birmingham. I know there are different mechanics. It just gives me that same feeling of enjoyment that I get out of Brass Birmingham, but not as complex. And that is Cape May. Now, Cape May, I picked up also on sale for a song. And it's fantastic. It's got great components. It's got these buildings that you build across the map. And it's got these landmarks that you add to the buildings. It's got this cool movement system that feels like it's a roll and move, but it's not because you have the, the set of cards that allow you to move spaces on the map. And then wherever you land, you do something like building a building or upgrading a building, something like that. But you use the cards one at a time, then you refresh your hand and you're able to use the cards again. So you have movements from, I think it's one to seven. Fantastic game. It's not, you know, it's not overly complex. It's got an, uh, it's got a very cool event system and the AI is super streamlined. It, you flip over card, it tells you what the AI is going to do, where it's going to build on the map. And, and it has multiple options in case it can't build where it wants to. Excellent game. Also plays very quick. And it gives you this great feeling of this building type game across Cape May. 
and <laughs> it, they even threw set collection with the birds on top of it. It feels kind of out of place, but it's a fun little thing to do when you're, you're moving across the map. So check out Cape May. Now for number seven, I don't know about you, but I've always liked XCOM, the computer game. I've always loved the battles in XCOM. I would just play battles over and over again. That's turn-based strategy, hiding behind cover, trying to get around your enemy, complete the objectives, all that stuff. And there's only been one game that I really found that done so well. And you've heard me mention this before, but this is For What Remains. Now, For What Remains is designed by David Thompson of Pavlov's House fame. Re recently, he did Resist. He's got a P500 game called Zheng He. And he's got a ton of games behind him. He's a fantastic designer. And now, this game was a, the first game to introduce me to a chip pull system where your initiative, your ability to move your units is based upon the chip that you pull out of the bag or the cup. And so, with, this, with the AI, the AI gets to put more chits in than you and gets to move faster and do more actions across the map. And so, you're trying to position yourself with the best cover and the best strategy to complete the map objectives. On top of the scenarios that it already provides, you're so easy to complete your own or create your own scenarios in this game and, and do... All sorts of things. You can even make a campaign on your own by just changing up the map and changing up the goals and everything. There's so much to do in this game, but it definitely gives you the the feeling of an XCOM type strategy combat game, and I love it. Now, each of these comes with only two factions. This, those All the factions are great, but you're going to feel left out not having all three boxes, and that can get a little expensive. But I have to say, one box is great. I love the game. And I would recommend it to anybody who's looking for a tactical skirmish game, especially like in the post-apocalyptic future type. And now we've had a lot of talk of like nature games recently with Earth coming out and Meadow and several others. But I don't get to hear this one mentioned often enough. And this one is Canopy. Now Canopy is designed by Tim Eisner who's known for a lot of his nature games like March of the Ants. Another hidden gem which I kept off this list but also he's done the new game Leaf which is coming out soon. But in Canopy it's a card drafting and set collection game where you're trying to build out this rainforest and so you're there's three sets of cards and you start with the first set, you look at it, if you want it, you take it. If not, you put it back, draw a new card for that stack, and you don't know what it is. And then you go on to the next stack and choose if you want that stack or not. But the AI is going to come up behind you and start picking up those stacks that maybe you passed up on. So stuff that you don't take, the AI is going to get. And you have to be careful with that little puzzle of, do I let the AI take this? Or should I take this even though this might not be the best thing for me? Very interesting decisions, very quick game, and plays in like 20, maybe 25 minutes. And the artwork is fantastic. Everything is great. I even got a jigsaw puzzle for this, just because I love the artwork. Great game. Tim Eisner is a great designer. Definitely worth checking out. I think you can get it for 25 bucks, and it's totally worth it. Alright, so number 5 was a controversial game when it came out, because everybody was like, Yay, new game! But wait. The artwork isn't as good as the old one. But the gameplay for a solo player is fantastic in Libertalia. <laughs> now, Libertalia, like I said, the artwork is very controversial. I don't know why. Maybe because I never played the original. I, I like the artwork. It's colorful. I like the graphic design. Everything looks crisp, clean, easy to read on the board. So for me, personally, it's great. But I have to tell you, the solo mode in this game is fantastic. I can't believe how good this solo mode is. Well, actually, I can. It's Automa Factory, right? And and the way they do their solo modes and how streamlined it is and how it feels like either one opponent or multiple opponents in, in their games, it's fantastic. They did the AI for many of the Stonemaier games, and they do such a good job. And I'm not a huge fan of AIs. I'm really not. But I love Automa Factory. And the, the way they did it in Libertali is so easy, streamlined, and they even added this dummy player in there called the Pilfer that gets in your way every time and it's really frustrating because it feels like a real game. And it's not easy to beat. 
It really isn't. It took me several tries to beat this one, but it's so worth it. I definitely say check it out. Get the metal coins too, because the metal coins are fantastic. But yeah, Libertalia, really worth it. Now, if you know me, I've been really into abstract games as of late. And I've done a playthrough for number four, and that is Garinto. Now, Garinto was a Kickstarter back in, I think, 2021. Uh, now it's available at Barnes & Noble and other retailers, of course. This game took me by surprise. I had no idea how much I liked abstract games until I played this one. And the puzzle and the components and everything that you play out on the board, it's, it's fantastic. And the, and the fact that the AI is easy to run, but you don't know what it's going to do. You have an idea, you know where it could possibly go. And, and it really imitates the idea of knowing that the other player might go to one of these two spots, but you don't know which one, so you kind of have to take a gamble and go for it. Oh, it's so good. It's excellent. I love this game. I've played this game probably a dozen times. I think it's time I do a, a review for it. And I tell you what, this game is fantastic. It's one of my favorite abstract games. If I did a ten top 10 abstract game, this would make the list easily. But yeah, and it's the price, the components, the price, I think it's like 30 bucks. Oh man, the components are great. There's like a hundred plastic tiles that stack and everything and all the cards. It's, it's fantastic. So if you like abstract puzzle games, definitely check this out. This one is so good. Now this next game is, is from a designer that you probably heard of because you've heard of his games like Merchant's Cove, or he helped develop Endless Winter. He designed Unconscious Mind, which is currently being produced right now. This one doesn't get a lot of love, but the solo mode, you should know about, and that's Sierra West. Now, Sierra West is designed by Johnny Pack, and Johnny Pack, <laughs> he's such a great designer. The designer of Coloma, Lions of Lydia, and other games. Just, I love his designs. He's got a lot of the Western themes going on, and if you've seen his pictures, he often wears a, a cowboy hat and stuff. He's just a great designer. But Sierra West has this really interesting action selection where you're slotting in these three cars, and de depending on their position, because one gets placed above the others, you, you run through this line of actions, and you're trying to accomplish the goals of the game, but the goals of the game are different depending on the module you choose. Because I think there's up to like four different modules in the game. And I prefer the Apple one. Although the Gold Rush one is good. All of them involved exploring this mountain this or these hills. And it, so it's this hills made up of these cards that you flip over and, and, and gain stuff depending on what's on the other side of the card. And you're trying to move your carriage across this track. There's so much going on. And, and there's it's just so much fun and the different modules make it feel fresh every time you play this one barely anybody knows about and you know who designed the solo mode david turtsy yeah that one <laughs> so I, I don't know what's going to stop you from picking up this game because you have two fantastic designers designing the game and the solo mode for a game you probably haven't even heard about or didn't even know had a solo mode. So definitely check out Sierra West. Yeah, it's so good. Especially if you like Johnny Pack. Definitely worth it. Alright, so I'm down to my last two hidden gems. And this next one, I don't think I've seen maybe three posts in the last two years on. And this one came in a, like a little traveling suitcase of mini games. And this one's called IO. Or maybe it's AO, I'm not sure how to pronounce it here. But it's a little samurai game. You ever play those video games where you're like this one samurai and you gotta fend off like 50 samurais at the same time and you're like swinging the sword this way and grabbing a pole and swinging it this way, dodging this way and doing that sort of thing? That's exactly what this game emulates. It's a fantastic solo experience. It plays in 10, 20 minutes. Easy to reset, easy to play, has multiple bosses that you fight at the end of each of the game. And so your setup's going to be different every time. You, you're trying to manage your deck by spending cards to parry attacks as well as to kill off some of the oncoming enemies. 
and you want to kill off some of the enemies so that you gain points in the end but if you if you parry off attacks you, you don't gain those those points there's this tug and war between dodging and fighting and it's tense it's fantastic and in like nobody knows this and <laughs> nobody knows there's a game for this so if you get the chance of checking this out this is part of the matchbox collection published by thundergriff games so you definitely want to check this one out ao io however you pronounce it such a good game and nobody knows it exists <laughs> if you do correct me let me know <laughs> and let me know how much you enjoy it okay so this last one may or may not be a hidden gem the thing is it's like a lot of the solo community i don't think know it exists but everyone that i see talk about it loves it like it's the fantastic game and for me it is the best deck builder i've ever played there's nothing that's ever come even close not even close and so without further ado i bring you baseball highlights 2045 now this may get some uh, dislikes, <laughs> but I'm not a fan of baseball. I'm really not. I, I played it when I was a kid. I did watch a little bit when I was a kid, but I just never really got into it. But baseball highlights, oh my goodness. It is the best deck builder ever because you're managing a team of, I think it's 15 in your team, and squaring off against an AI who gets a major advantage with their team picks. And you're doing this back and forth seven game session of trying to beat them out in this tournament. And so you're building your deck to counter the AI's deck. And you have this fantastic board, actually two board setup where you have bases that get loaded up on either side for each team. And so you're trying to do pitches and throw runners out and all this stuff all with just cards and it's fantastic the design behind this is brilliant i i this is a 10 out of 10 game for me there's so much going on with this game it is so good and don't be discouraged by how many expansions there are you don't need any of them just get the base box the expansions are great they're better for multiplayer in my opinion but the base box just get this and there's a ton of fan made content as well the the fans who love this game they put out whole seasons of different solo modes where you can play a whole season against the AI and grow your team and all that stuff. It, it's fantastic. There, I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Find this game. It goes on sale all the time. On um, It's from Eagle Griffin. So check their website because it goes on sale all the time, especially around holidays and stuff. So je definitely check that out. Baseball Highlights 2045. Best deck builder ever nothing's come close it's been that way for me for years now and so there you have it that was my top 10 hidden gem solo board games ask me any questions in the comments below tell me how wrong i am by my picks for these games but also please like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here and i thank you very much for watching tabletop for one have a great night <laughs>